If you've uh, heard it once, you've heard it a thousand times, it's not cholesterol. Um, but that's not always true. And uh, actually, for a group of people with a genetic, uh, a genetic variation, and I've mentioned this multiple times, familial hypercholesterolemia, um, <clears throat> cholesterol matters a lot. Now, <clears throat> We had a, a, a viewer uh, recently comment that uh, she had FH. Uh, she mentioned that at, um, at one point her blood glucose was over, was around 600. Does that sound possible? Oh yes, that does sound possible and that does happen with, uh, with these folks. Um, what's the picture I'm showing here? It's called a xanthoma or a xanthalasma. These are little balls, tumors of um, cholesterol. This is in a 45-year-old man with uh, FH, familial hypercholesterolemia. Now, <clears throat> um, why, is, why is that important? Well, you've heard of cystic fibrosis. You've heard of multiple sclerosis. But most of us have not heard of familial hypercholesterolemia. Yet familial hypercholesterolemia is far more common than either of those other two uh, problems. And it kills people a lot. Now, <clears throat> in fact, you, uh, you, the numbers are 1 in 200 or 1 in 250. So... <clears throat> If that's the case, and we are currently getting, um, what, 13,000 views, so it's 50 to 60 people per day with familial hypercholesterolemia are looking at videos on this channel. Now, <clears throat> here's another scary statistic about this disease, and that is only one to 10 out of 100 people with FH know it. And for sure, when, uh, especially like the um, one FH patient I knew, I, I knew her in her 60s. She was a patient of mine at an older age, but in her 30s, she had developed angina. She went in to see the doc and the doc said, well, you've got anxiety. Um, Fortunately for her, she was a hard-headed person. She continued to have chest pain, went back in, and uh, insisted that the doc do some more studies. He did some blood studies and found, oh, lo and behold, her uh, cholesterol was way over 400. So that's, uh, that's not a, uh, an atypical story at all. There are some treatment issues with it, but treatment issues are not the biggest problem with FH. Finding out who's got it is the biggest problem with FH. And uh, there's a great uh, site called the, uh, you just look up familial hypercholesterolemia. Uh, they've got a, a really good group, a great uh, website. I think I'll cover that in another video. Now, what, uh, what causes the problem in um, FH? Well, it's genetic. Um, and at this point, there are almost 2,000 different genetic uh, variations that have been shown to cause this. Uh, SNPs, single nucleotide. Nucleotide is uh, the part of the, the genetic makeup. Polymorphism, poly meaning many, and morphism meaning uh, body states. So there are about, uh, again, 2,000. 1,700 of those have to do with a thing called PCSK9. Um, I won't go into what the PCSK9 stands for, but PCSK9 is a regulator of our uh, liver. Now, what's our liver got to do with it? Our, one of the major roles of our liver is to take cholesterol, bad cholesterol, LDL, the cholesterol that it's pulling out of the, uh, the body, uh, find that cholesterol in the blood. There are receptors on the liver that... Um, that get LDL out of the blood, pull it into the liver cell, and digest that LDL. Well, these are all related to defects in that process of the liver cleaning up 
uh, LDL or bad cholesterol. So we can talk more about pathophysiology, uh, patho meaning um, bad, disease, physiology meaning mechanism. We can talk about that later. We can talk about things like these xanthelasmas, xanthomas, what the physical exam looks like later. But I wanted to cover, start this off, this uh, series of videos covering a study that the FH, uh, the familial hypercholesterolemia uh, group did to basically study uh, not so much why, but are we missing a lot of folks? The Cascade is an FH, uh, part of the FH group, they, and here's the study. So basically what they did, here's some background on it. We'll cover um, some of the key components of the study. And then we'll get over to the summary. And the summary is making a few uh, points which uh, won't surprise you. And that is, compared with men, uh, women were less likely to be uh, on any statin therapy. They were less likely to be on a high-intensity statin and less likely to achieve the goal of an LDL less than 100. Uh, Asians and blacks were also less likely than whites to achieve an LDL less than 100. Notably, Asians were more likely to be on any statin, but less likely to be prescribed the high-intensity statins, which are required for an FH patient, usually, to get below an LDL of 100. Um, there have been some studies which show that Asians may uh, be under-metabolizers of statins and therefore Docs are likely to be more nervous about um, treating Asians with uh, high-intensity statins. While blacks were undertreated compared to whites, uh, once they were discovered and treated, they were more likely to have uh, the high-intensity statin. So in other words, what that means is they were less likely to find uh, this disease among blacks. But once they found it, they did go ahead and recognize the seriousness seriousness of the disease and treat the seriousness. Now, <clears throat> uh, they went on to say, our results mirror prior findings from non-FH populations in the U.S. Women and min minorities receive less guideline-based cardioprotective therapies. Now, a few prior studies have eva evaluated health disparities for um, FH patients. You know, this fact that uh, it's not recognized very often. Uh, there was one, St Safeheart, Spanish fa familial, uh, Spanish FH, and they did find the same thing in Spanish FH, that women weren't as likely to be uh, recognized as having this. Now, <clears throat> what I'm going to do, uh, those are the, the punchlines. Let me go back and cover a couple of items um, for those of you that are still interested. Um, in terms of FH itself, th there's some good background here, and let me cover that quickly. Um, patients with FH um, have high LDLs. We know that uh, the prevalence is 1 in 250. Um, it affects all ethnicities and genders. It, can, the it greatly increases the risk, but the risk can be mitigated. We have, as I've said uh, earlier in this video, we have treatments. It's uh, not so much a problem with treatments. It's a problem with um, we need better treatments. But the bigger problem is we need to have we need to be finding these people. One of the things you'll see on the FH uh, channel is they keep saying you never find an individual, you find a family. Although that's for the most part true. Those of us who've been involved in genetic studies know very clearly, quite often you find someone in a family who's got a very different genetic makeup uh, from uh, the rest of the family. That's just a human behavior issue, and that just happens. <clears throat> in other words, maybe some input of, of some genetic uh, material into the family. First-line therapy is statins, and non-statins are used, often required to get the LDL to gold, which is below 100. 25% uh, of U.S. FH patients uh, um, achieve uh, the goal of less than 100. Only 25%. Again, it's difficult to treat. But the bigger problem is finding it, because only 1 in 
10 to 1 in 100 of people that have it actually know they have it. Uh, and they hi hypothesize the, um, the disparities. Okay, so here's, uh, here's the, um, the acronym, Cascade Screening for Awareness and Detection, Cascade FH Registry. That was the name of the study. And they did this in what? Uh, there's some of the uh, pictures and locations of the studies. Uh, they went to, um, I think it was, it was 25 or 50 different groups, uh, locations where the study was done. Again, I have hopped around a little bit in this study. I've, I've struggled with some of the uh, some of my technology, as I often do. If you've made it this far, again, thank you very much for your interest.